You are grinding in the gym. You are saying no to the cake. You are going to bed hungry. Yet, every single morning, you step on that scale and the number stares back at you, completely unchanged. Or worse, it's gone up. It feels like your body is broken, like your genetics are fighting against you. But here is the harsh reality. Your metabolism isn't broken. Your math is. Weight loss is strictly governed by the laws of thermodynamics. If you aren't losing fat, you are making critical errors in your equation. Today, we are going to fix them. We are going to break down the six biggest mistakes that are wasting your time and effectively killing your progress. Starting with the most dangerous one, the aggressive deficit. This is the classic New Year's resolution trap. You decide you want to lose weight, so you slash your calories in half. You think, if eating less is good, eating nothing is better. You aim for 1-200 calories a day. In the first week, you drop 5 pounds. You feel like a champion, but by week 3, disaster strikes. Your energy crashes. Your strength in the gym plummets. Your sleep quality disintegrates because your cortisol levels are through the roof. And then, the hunger hormones, ghrelin, scream at your brain until you find yourself binge eating everything in the pantry. This is the binge restrict cycle. Scientifically, you should never aim to lose more than 1% of your total body weight per week. That is the biological speed limit. For most people, the sweet spot is a moderate deficit of 300 to 500 calories below your maintenance level. This is the difference between a sustainable lifestyle and a crash diet that leaves you fatter than when you started. It's not about how fast you start. It's about how long you can keep going without burning out. This leads us directly to the second mistake, the cardio trap. We have all seen the guy at the gym who spends an hour on the treadmill, sweating buckets, looking miserable, and never changing his physique. Here is the math that nobody tells you. You cannot out-train a bad diet. An hour of intense running might burn 400 to 500 calories if you are lucky. Do you know how easy it is to eat 500 calories? That is one large bagel with cream cheese. That is two slices of pizza. It takes you 60 minutes of suffering to burn it off, and 60 seconds to consume it. If you are using cardio as your primary method to create a deficit, you are fighting a losing battle. Your diet handles the weight loss. Your training handles the muscle retention. Cardio is just a tool for heart health and supplementary calorie burn. Stop trying to run away from your fork. Now let's talk about the invisible assassin of weight loss. Mistake number three. Ignoring liquid calories and condiments. You are eating clean. You have chicken breast and salad. But you drown that salad in ranch dressing or healthy olive oil. Let's look at the numbers. One single tablespoon of olive oil is 120 calories. Most people pour three or four tablespoons without thinking. That is nearly 500 calories, an entire meal, hidden in your dressing. Or take your morning coffee. Black coffee is zero calories. But that venti caramel macchiato? That is a milkshake disguised as coffee, packing 400 calories of pure sugar and fat. If you are not tracking sauces, oils, sodas, and juices, you are not tracking calories. You are guessing. And in the game of fat loss, the house always wins when you guess. Switch to zero-calorie cooking sprays. Swap the mayo for mustard or hot sauce. Drink water or zero-sugar beverages. These small swaps don't feel like a diet, but they save you thousands of calories a week. Speaking of tracking, this brings us to mistake number four. The intuitive eating delusion. You cannot manage what you do not measure. People swear they are eating 500 calories, but when we actually audit their intake, they are eating 2,500. We are terrible at estimating portion sizes. A serving of peanut butter is smaller than a golf ball, but your version is the size of a tennis ball. If you are serious about this, you need structure. You need data. You need to weigh your food and log it. I know it sounds tedious, but it guarantees results. If you are feeling overwhelmed by the idea of calculating macros, figuring out meal plans, and knowing exactly what to eat to shred fat while keeping muscle, I have actually solved this problem for you. I've put together a complete step-by-step -step cutting guide. It takes all the guesswork out of the equation. It creates a personalized meal plan for you so you don't have to stress about the numbers. You just follow the plan and get the results. It's the tool I wish I had when I started. If you want to stop spinning your wheels, check out the link in the description below right after this video. Now back to the science. Mistake number five is a mental trap obsessing over the scale. 
The scale is a liar. It measures total mass, not body fat. If you drink a liter of water, the scale goes up two pounds. If you eat a high carb meal, your muscles store glycogen and hold on to water, and the scale goes up. If you are lifting weights properly, you are building muscle while burning fat. This is called body recomposition. You could be looking leaner, your waist could be shrinking, but the scale might stay exactly the same. If you panic and slash your calories further because the number didn't move, you will burn muscle tissue. Instead of staring at the scale, take progress photos. Same lighting, same time of day, once a week. Use a tape measure on your waist. These are the true indicators of fat loss. The scale is just one data point, not the whole story. Finally, mistake number six, the macro imbalance. There are two extremes here. First, the low fat crowd. People think eating fat makes you fat. This is 1990s science. You need dietary fat. Your body requires at least 20% of your calories from healthy fats to produce hormones like testosterone. If you cut fats too low, your libido crashes, your skin dries out, and your hormones go haywire. Eat your eggs, eat your avocados, eat your salmon. The second extreme is the low protein mistake. This is the most critical error. When you are in a calorie deficit, your body is looking for energy. It will break down whatever is available, fat or muscle. If you don't eat enough protein, your body will cannibalize your own muscle tissue for fuel. You will lose weight, yes, but you will end up looking skinny fat, soft, weak, and undefined. Protein is also the most satiating nutrient. It keeps you full. Aim for one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you are significantly overweight, use your goal body weight or lean body mass as the benchmark. This protects your hard-earned muscle and keeps your metabolism fire burning. You don't need to do keto. You don't need to do paleo. You don't need to fast for 20 hours unless you want to. The best diet is the one you can stick to for six months, not six days. Weight loss isn't magic. It is precision. Stop making these mistakes. Start tracking your data. Trust the process and the results will follow. Get your protein up, get your steps in, and stop overcomplicating the simple math of thermodynamics. Make sure to check out that cutting guide if you want the fast track, and I'll see you in the next video.